a Daytona 500 without Team Penske, Hendrick Motorsports, and Joe Gibbs Racing might happen. Welcome back to Break Hard, I'm Matt. On Monday, a number of different articles were posted about NASCAR's ongoing charter negotiations. Apparently teams are handing out information now like they're Oprah because they just wanna put as much into the world as they can. So we learned a lot more about this new proposal that was sent over to teams a little over two weeks ago. And yeah, things still aren't going great. That Homer Simpson, this is going great. Yeah, that's not going very well at all. So let me preface, on one side, I understand NASCAR wants to maintain control, maintain control of the money, everything goes along with that, get it. Teams want more money, more control, 100% understand that. Now as fans, we're left in the middle, having to just listen to these two sides bicker back and forth and hope that we don't get a, you know, IndyCar, Champ Car type of split here because that would be absolutely devastating. So the new proposal, of course, we already know things that came out a little bit last week. NASCAR laid the ground rules for private equity getting involved, which is buying into a charter, not buying a charter into a charter. I'm okay with that. I don't want them to be able to buy charters because that is opening up Pandora's box for a great way to ruin the series. It also said that they're willing to give, uh, you know, the seven year charter agreement plus an additional seven years after that. And as Ryan McGee said in his ESPN story on Monday, Jim France apparently told teams, we can't support you because we don't have anybody supporting us beyond that seven years, which I don't necessarily agree with because the NBA is going through contract or revenue negotiations right now with their TV partners. And there's no talk about NBA franchises going away and them being like, we can't be able to support you guys. No, the revenue just changes based off of how much money you're getting from your next TV deal. So in theory, it could go down, but typically it always goes up. So for him to say that, don't necessarily fully agree with with that. And then there's the topic of the France family owning a charter. And that has been a major sticking point for teams. But apparently they were told in this new proposal, which they were expecting it to not be in there, it's now in there. And they were sternly told, like they had to meet with Don Corleone, that this would just be like Team Penske and IndyCar, that there's not an issue with that. Except there's a major issue with that, which we've already talked about before. It's a major conflict of interest, right? Roger Goodell doesn't own an NFL team. Rob Manfred doesn't own an MLB team because it's a huge conflict of interest at the end of the day. Team Penske and IndyCar is a major conflict of interest, and it does nothing but make everybody question whether or not they're being treated the same as every other team in the pit lane. So having the France family buy a charter just doesn't seem like a great business move and a great way to, you know, continue to distract people from, you know, making the on-track product better. Be like, ah, well, now we have to deal with this. But I think maybe one of the biggest takeaways from all the information that came out on Monday and got published in stories is the fact that NASCAR is seemingly willing to move on without Hendrick Motorsports, Joe Gibbs Racing, and Team Penske signing on to the new charter agreement. They're willing to run races next year without those teams on the grid which is certainly going to be something if it happens. Obviously, Hendrick Motorsports, Joe Gibbs Racing, and Team Penske, along with 2311 Racing, have probably been the ones that have been the biggest you know, proponents of pushing to get this revenue deal uh, more team-sided than it currently is. And moving on without them is going to really split the fan base because if you don't have Kyle Larson, Chase Elliott, um, Denny Hamlin... Ryan Blaney, Joey Logano, Austin Sendrick, Alex Bowman, William Byron, and the list goes on and on. Whoever's in the 19 car next year, Christopher Bell for his fans that are out there, and Ty Gibbs for the one person that runs that Team 54 account on Twitter. Yeah, you're going to have a lot of people that aren't tuning into races. Sure, you're going to have some people still out there. Maybe you'll have uh, Bubba Wallace and Tyler Reddick. Maybe. Todd Gillen and whoever else is over at FRM. Trackhouse guys potentially, maybe, but NASCAR seemingly is willing to move on without them, which is certainly interesting uh, because I think the bigger factor is here, if they don't agree to this charter agreement by the end of the year, December 31st, on June 1st, NASCAR can pull all those charters back and put them on the market for somebody else to buy, meaning the Hendrick Motorsports charters, the Joe Gibbs charters, and the Team Penske charters could all be pulled from them and sold off to other people, leaving them without charters and having to race for open spots if they wanted to continue to do that. Now, that's an extreme example, and I don't expect it to get there, but that's, of course, one of the options that is on the table. Don't love that whatsoever. So some more information that was also included in this is on the topic of charters, 
Teams are a little bit confused by Front Row Motorsports announcing that they had purchased a charter. Apparently, the purchase price was around $25 million. And even Tony Stewart was baffled by the fact that people were wanting to buy charters because there's no guarantee that, well, they're going to even be worth anything uh, come 2025. And it also has teams now concerned that a smaller team like Front Row Motorsports could be willing to break ranks from the RTA and sign with NASCAR and get some of the other smaller teams to also sign while the big teams hold out and try to wield their power. Yeah, the union busting apparently is working. It's the 1940s and people are out here <laughs> just busting up all of these unions. And for NASCAR, I understand the tactic Absolutely. For the teams, I understand them being like, you got to stick with us. You got to stick with us. But for the smaller guys, the FRMs of the world, signing on now and potentially getting a bigger cut than what they would have if all the big teams had signed, you know, at the same time as them. Yeah, it's hard, right? It's a business at the end of the day. Jerry Freeze is over there trying to make some money. Bob Jenkins, they want to make money with FRM. So uh, I can I can understand it if that's the direction that they want to go. But teams if everybody sticks together, it's more powerful, right? NASCAR's mantra has always kind of been NASCAR will continue to exist with you or without you. It does not matter. Meaning like if anybody was acting out, they're like, well, you can go away because this will still be here. NASCAR will continue to exist, but it won't be anywhere nearly as popular as it is. If Hendrick Motorsports, Joe Gibbs Racing, Team Penske, if the big players aren't a part of it and the teams have said openly, they do not want to start a rival series. They absolutely don't want to. That's like the last ditch effort. They want to continue to work on this with NASCAR, but things just aren't progressing very well at the moment, which I completely understand. So some more information that came out in this whole, you know, news dump on Monday is kind of the breakdown that teams want. Currently, teams receive 25% of revenue. NASCAR argues that it's closer to like 35% after you uh, factor in the purse money that they get from the tracks portion of that 65 percent of the pie breakdown teams now want 45 percent and i think that's actually a valid um ask by the teams and if i was guessing there hasn't been a breakdown of it i would guess it would be teams 45 tracks 45 nascar 10 currently nascar receives 10 tracks 65 teams 25 and then that completes your 100 percent for all the math whizzes at home. So I'm guessing that's might be what the breakdown is. So teams want 45%. They also want 33% of new revenue, meaning coming from gambling or whatever new revenue streams come up. And I get that 100% because NASCAR is going to make money off of gambling. Teams also need to make money off of that because without the teams, well, NASCAR can't make money off of that gambling. So that's something that certainly needs to be discussed. And then you have the topic of teams wanting to have a bigger say in, you know, essentially governance, kind of the direction of NASCAR rules, as well as like logistics. There's a reason that MLB and NFL have like winter meetings and owner meetings. They all come together. They agree on rule changes for the next year. They agree on, you know, revenue streams that they're going to chase after marketing, all the things. They all kind of come together and agree on that. NASCAR needs that same sort of setup. NASCAR's franchise model is a franchise model in name, sure, with the charters and everything, but it doesn't work like how the major sports do. At the end of the day, the France family still owns the entire series and you have to play by their rules. Where everyone else works together, they hire a commissioner who works in the interests of the teams. Right now, NASCAR is not working in the interests of the teams. NASCAR is working in the interests of themselves and the teams are working in the interests of themselves. And that's where you have this conflict and this ongoing nonsense that we're continuing to have to talk about. So that's really what it comes down to at the end of the day. If Hendrick and Gibbs and Penske all hold out, I just envision them like walking together like the trio in Superbad <laughs> does. It just looks like a ridiculous visual. But I, if they hold out, things are going to get very interesting very quickly. So at the end of the day, what does this mean for fans? Well, we're all stuck sitting around wondering if we're going to have all the cars there at the Daytona 500 next year or if we're only going to have half the cars and what's going to you know, replace them if they're not there. Of course, the Gen 7 car, there's not like a ton of them out on the market for people to buy. So it'll be interesting to see how they'll fill the field out if a Hendrick Motorsports, Joe Gibbs Racing, Team Penske don't show up because that alone is 11 of your 36 chartered cars. Now, I highly doubt we see anybody hold out. I think they do come to an agreement finally, but things certainly aren't going well at the moment. So, so let me know in the comments what you think about this. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.